know about you guys, but I definitely have a sweet tooth. And one of my favorite sweet recipes are my grandma's chocolate caramels. They've got this saltiness and this rich flavor and I just love them. But I know that making caramel at home can feel super daunting. Trust me, I've read all the tips and tricks to know when it's done, but for me, I like a foolproof method. And I'm gonna show you how to do that today. Let's get started by first prepping our pan. I'm using an eight by eight inch baking dish and I've laid two sheets of parchment paper on top of one another. This is gonna make it really easy to remove the caramels once they're set. Now this is something that I've switched up from the original recipe by adding toasted pumpkin seeds on the bottom. It gives it a nice earthiness and just really balances the sweetness from the caramel and the chocolate well. I also like the crunch that it gives it. You could do this with other ingredients as well. Sometimes during the holidays, I like to do crushed peppermint candy. Um, you can get really creative. Now that I've got my pepita base, let's talk about the chocolate. Now I'm using 10 ounces of really good chocolate. And this can be whatever your preference is, whether it's semi-sweet or dark or even milk. I like a semi-sweet. I'm gonna take my chocolate bars and just chop them up pretty finely as I'm going to add it to some cream and I want it to distribute evenly. Now it's on to the chocolate part of our chocolate caramels. So the first thing I wanna do is take two cups of heavy cream. This is gonna go into a saucepan and I wanna bring it to a boil. Once your cream comes to a boil, you're gonna add your 10 ounces of chopped chocolate. Now what I like to do is I like to not stir this for about a minute. Give it a minute to really absorb in there and then you're gonna get that glossy chocolate. Look at that silky smooth chocolate. Now it's on to the caramel. In a separate saucepan, I'm going to combine some sugar, some water, some light corn syrup, and just a quarter teaspoon of salt. The salt is my favorite part. Now over medium high heat, I wanna bring this to a boil. I'll stir just to combine these ingredients very gently, but once they're combined, I'm not gonna stir at all. That way we'll avoid crystallization on the sides of the pan. It's a beautiful amber color. Let's get that temperature reading, 247, just where I want it. Let's add the chocolate. So when you add the chocolate, it'll bubble like this just what it's supposed to do. So we'll let this go for about 15 minutes. What we're looking for is this chocolate caramel to come up to 255. Once it hits 255, we know it's ready to go over those pepitas. All right, we've hit 255. The last thing we wanna do is off the heat, add about three tablespoons of butter. Now this is not only great for flavor, but it's gonna give it a silky smooth finish. Ugh, and look at this, it just melts instantly in there. This recipe is indulgent in the best kind of way. I'm a sucker for both chocolate and caramel, and the fact that I can make them together in this recipe without any fear or frustration that something's gonna go wrong is incredible. It all comes down to temperature and getting that accurate read. Once that butter is fully melted, it's time to go over the pepitas. Finally, I like to add a little sprinkle of salt on the top. Typically, I do this after it's cooled for about 10 minutes, but there's no reason we can't do it right now. A flaky sea salt is the best way to finish. All right, now while these rest for about one to two hours, I'm indulgent. I already made another batch earlier. I wanna show you how they look. Because we did our parchment paper, it's so easy to lift them out of the baking dish here. They've set beautifully. There's that great texture on top, so they get the saltiness with the chocolate and the caramel. And let's not forget about those pepitas on the bottom. Yum. That'll be an amazing crunch and just an added bonus of flavor. Now, when you're ready to portion them out, I like about one inch squares. It's important to use a well-oiled knife to 
get in there. You can cut into your chocolate caramels and go in and do little one inch squares. The perfect indulgent treat. I've got the crunchiness, the saltiness, and those big chocolate and caramel flavors. Temperature was key to making the perfect caramels at home. Can't wait to dig in. Mm-hmm.